Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the new Porsche 911 GT3. We've got dry weather, we've got a nice road, so today is a good day. So Porsche GT3, let's start with the engine. I do have a video going into great detail about this engine, so I'd recommend checking that out. But it is a four liter, naturally aspirated, boxer six cylinder engine producing 502 horsepower uh, at about 8,400 RPM, revs all the way to 9,000 thousand rpm and peak torque 346 pound feet now if you do look at the engine's torque curve there's a noticeable bump around 5000 rpm but you do have pretty useful power throughout the rev range uh, but from 5000 rpm to 9000 rpm you really can start to pick up some speed quite quickly and I do love a good naturally aspirated engine. I mean, you just feel like you have so much better response with naturally aspirated engines versus today's turbocharged engines, where wherever you put your foot on that throttle pedal, you actually get a difference, right? Instead of a turbo where you kind of wait and then it shows up and it's not quite what you were expecting this, the throttle pedal tuning, very good. You get exactly what you ask for and you know you're very connected to it because it's naturally aspirated there's nothing all that complicated going on right there's max there's minimum and the reaction time to getting that max torque versus minimum is very quick moving on to the transmission this is using a seven speed porsche pdk so dual clutch transmission uh, you can also get an optional six speed manual transmission so how fantastic is that i don't really think there's cars of this caliber offering manual transmissions anymore. I think there's an Aston Martin that does it, uh, maybe the Lotus Evora, but really in, in a car of this category, you know, the Aston Martin's a bit different, more of a GT Cruiser um, than, you know, something that can really attack a track like this GT3. Cars of this caliber, they're not offering manual transmissions anymore, and that's a shame. Um, and there is actually a benefit to doing the manual transmission in this car. So not only is it 37 pounds lighter, uh, so that's definitely a benefit versus the PDK, but it also has a slightly higher top speed. So with the manual, 198 miles per hour versus with the PDK, 197 miles per hour. So if you were to have a drag race uh, that was infinitely long, <laughs> because of course, of course the, the PDK is gonna have the advantage off the line. Uh, but if that drag strip were long enough, eventually the manual transmission would catch up, even though it's slower to shift and slower to launch. Uh, zero to 60 for the manual transmission is a bit lower versus the PDK uh, because the shifts in this are just so exceptionally quick. Uh, but regardless, very, very cool that Porsche is still offering a manual transmission in a vehicle like this. Now, you may notice that with the new 911s, they have an eight-speed PDK and a seven-speed manual transmission. So why does this have one less gear in each? Well, it's using the old GT3 transmissions, and there's a good reason for that. Weight savings. So the seven-speed is actually 44 pounds lighter uh, than the 992's eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. So a significant weight savings by using the old transmission and honestly, I don't think you'll miss that extra gear. I think this transmission is fantastic. The shift speeds are exceptional, as you would predict. And it's a very good transmission, well spaced out for the gearing and the speeds uh, that you're allowed to get. I always like, uh, you know, more aggressive gearing than what Porsche does. Uh, but I think with the PDK here, the gearing spacing is pretty good. This GT3 is a larger car. Uh, so, you know, it's about 1.9 inches wider than the previous GT3, so it's bigger, right? So that means it weighs more, right? Well, it's actually only 11 pounds heavier uh, than the previous generation, whether you go with the manual or whether you go with the dual clutch. And Porsche has put a big emphasis on weight reduction. Okay, so listen to some of the efforts here to removing weight from the vehicle. Removing the rear seats takes out 22 pounds. An optional carbon fiber roof can remove two pounds. A reduction in sound deadening versus the 992 pulls out 4.2 pounds. A thinner liner behind the seats removes 2.6 pounds. Carbon bucket seats can pull out 33 pounds. Porsche ceramic composite brakes pull out 39 pounds versus the standard brakes. Versus the previous GT3, 10.4 pounds have been removed by lightweight glass, 5.5 pounds from the front fascia and hood, 1.1 pounds from the rear fascia, 3 pounds from the front wheels, even though they are wider, and 22 pounds from the lightweight stainless steel exhaust. 
engine revisions and revised engine mounts have pulled out 16.7 pounds and 7.7 .7 pounds respectively and there's now a lithium ion battery that pulls out 22 pounds versus the GT3 which is centrally mounted behind the front hood. So overall the curb weight and especially considering you know there's a naturally aspirated engine producing a healthy amount of power curb weights are really good. Now what about aerodynamics? So this is also quite improved over the previous generation GT3. So in all the standard positions, this has 50% more downforce and it has an adjustable diffuser up front as well as the adjustable wing in the back. So there's four different positions you can put that wing. And if you put it in the most aggressive positions, front and back, then you're getting 150% more downforce than the previous GT3, about 850 pounds of downforce. So what is this thing like to drive? Well, uh, for the most part, it's genuinely fantastic. Uh, you know, the steering feel is fairly light, but it's very responsive. We're on Michelin Cup tires, so, you know, plenty of grip there, plenty of response from those tires. Uh, does exactly what you ask of it. Nice weighting to it as you build into the corner there. Um, and, you know, the feedback, I was just coming out of a McLaren 620R, and that was about feeling absolutely every tiny little detail of the road. I feel like in this, it's a bit less. Uh, as far as feeling all those tiny little high frequency vibrations uh, but it certainly feels fantastic like I don't have anything to complain about um, and, and possibly I think there's probably some drivers of when I was in that McLaren 620R that would say you know what this thing uh, the steering's a bit rough because they provide you every tiny little piece of detail, which can be good or bad. I mean, it's certainly good to have communication to the driver, right? One of the things I really like about the Porsche 911 GT3 experience is that, yes, you're in this crazy capable car, but it feels like a very useful, usable car. Like the visibility in this is really good. You've got a fairly low cowl, you've got this dash fairly low, so you've got really good front visibility, great visibility out the sides, good visibility out the wing, except for the fact that, you know, if you look in your rear view mirror, that wing is dead center in the rear view mirror. So yeah, you can still see behind it, but it is right in the middle. You also have a ton of cargo space. I've got two carry-on bags uh, in the front, and then behind me, there's so much space. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive impressive actually how useful this is. Of course, you've got the rear seats deleted, which helps take out that weight, and you've got plenty of useful space back there. So I like that it's maintained as a useful space, uh, even though you've got a big engine back there too, right? Four liter, six cylinder engine back there, and yet you still have all this space uh, for practical use. So it's actually a very practical vehicle, doesn't crush you on visibility like many of the cars in this price range will do. They'll say, you know what, rearward visibility, you don't need that, we're gonna get rid of all of it. Uh, this gives you good visibility all around, which is kind of rare in this segment, and I really like that. I feel like people are like, oh, we've got sensors, we've got cameras, you know, we don't need all this like crazy good visibility, but from a driver's perspective, it lets you see and feel the environment around you, and I appreciate that about this car. Now, as far as the suspension, this is the first time in a road-going 911 that they're actually using a double wishbone suspension, and Porsche says this gives them better control of the camber throughout that range, the suspension travel range. So, increasing grip as you have, you know, that variation in where your tire is at based on the suspension travel. Also, with the suspension, you have all kinds of adjustment, right? So, you can adjust the damping, uh, you can adjust the toe, the camber, you can dial that in. Uh, to what you would like. You also have front nose lift, so if you're driving around town and you don't want that nose really close to the ground so you can get over, you know, speed bump or whatever it is, low curb, uh, then you can raise up the front and that's GPS enabled, so to remember those spots. And in the rear, you have rear wheel steering and Porsche says they incorporate it a little bit differently within the GT3 than within the standard 911s and so there's a bit of a middle ground. Instead of being, you know, below this speed, the wheels are opposite and aid with maneuverability and above this speed, you know, they, they both turn together, so it aids with stability at those higher speeds. Uh, there's kind of a middle ground with the GT3 where, you know, it's very uh, situation dependent on which way it will choose um, once you're above a certain speed, but also below a certain speed. So there's a bit more variation in the rear wheel steering. Uh, sometimes I find rear wheel steering can be a little off-putting. It feels a little strange um, because the rear end is doing something and it might feel like the rear end slipping. I never get that sensation with this car. So the way they have set it up, I really do appreciate. I think they've done a nice job uh, keeping it 
feeling very natural. Now, as far as the wheels and brakes, so this is the first time on the 911 GT3 they're actually doing staggered wheels. So 20 inch wheels up front, 21 inch wheels in the back. And one of the things that I found interesting they said about this and why they chose to go with the larger diameter wheel in the back is that it helped with their wet stability. So they wanted to put a bit more tire on the back and they went with this 21 inch uh, wheel but in doing so, in widening that tire's uh, width, then they had a problem with wet traction. And so they said going to the 21 inch wheel helped them with the new Porsche wet mode, which is aiding in stability when you run into water. They said that this new wheel combination with the 21s in the back helped uh, elongate that contact patch and improve the wet traction. The brakes used are absolutely massive. They're the same diameter as the brakes used on the 911 Turbo. Uh, they are a bit thinner, so they're about 17% lighter than on the 911 Turbo. Uh, one of the interesting things they do is instead of drilling all the way through, they have these countersunk uh, little dimples put into the standard rotors. And so part of it is that by reducing the material by using a thinner uh, brake rotor, you know, obviously it doesn't have quite the same strength as what's being used on the 911 Turbo. And so instead of drilling all the way through, they have these dimples that can help clean those brake pads, uh, but don't go all the way through to maintain some of the structural rigidity, the strength of that brake rotor. Now the car we are on is using the ceramic composite brakes. So this pulls out about 40 pounds of unsprung weight. So if you go back to the curb weights for this thing, the manual, um, you know, being like 31, 26 pounds, uh, if you, you know, take out the, you go for the optional carbon ceramics, uh, optional roof, optional seats, you know, there's another 70 to 80 pounds you can pull out. Three seat options, these are the carbon bucket seats, to pull out about 33 pounds. So looking at those curb weights, uh, you can pull another 70 to 80 pounds out of those uh, with certain options. And the car that we're in right now, I mean, yeah, Porsche options can get crazy, but this car is under $200,000 with those options. So it's got the optional brakes, it's got the optional seats pulling out, you know, another 70 to 80 pounds, uh, which is fantastic. I mean, the, the joy in driving is highly rewarded when a vehicle's weight is down. And this does a very good job of that while still maintaining actually a rather nice interior. So like, yeah, it's got the thinner glass and you'll notice that on the highway, the wind noise, uh, but the interior itself, very solid. I haven't had rattles in this thing. Uh, it's been a very pleasant experience to be inside. And it's like, yeah, you could daily this thing if you really wanted to. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a nice experience being inside of this vehicle. So overall, I think I usually get a bit cynical when it comes to cars in this price range with the question of like, is it worth it, right? And certainly that's kind of a relative question, but is it worth it is something I, I often don't think is necessarily the case when you get into cars of this price range uh, and that is not how I feel about this thing I, I, I mean it's just it's genuinely fantastic. The first time I drove a 911 GT3 it was back to back with a Ferrari 458. And this was before I had really driven many vehicles and I was biased towards Ferrari. I absolutely loved Ferrari at the time. And that was my first time driving when I thought this is gonna be the best experience ever. I'm gonna love the Ferrari GT3, eh, whatever. And I drove them back to back and I came out loving the GT3 and being like, eh, as far as the Ferrari. The GT3 is just an exceptional car. And, you know, yeah, are there cars that you can get more than 500 horsepower in this price range? Sure. But you look at the weight, you look at the responsiveness, you look at the character of like how this thing drives, the dynamics of it, and it's all so good and yet so daily drivable, livable, um, practical. You've got useful space, you've got good visibility. It's very difficult to fault this thing. Now, that said, this is a pre-production model. Um, so not everything has been perfectly worked out. And in this case, there is a check engine light. So there's my one fault. It has a check engine light. Still uh, seems to drive just fine with it on. Um, I think that's like kind of part of being in the Volkswagen family. But overall, love this car. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.